we all like speed, right? Windows down, going fast, wind in your hair. Well, instead of wind in your hair, let's talk about, uh, your fingers on a keyboard? In terms of websites, speed is very important. Humans are impatient, we want things now. That's why I'm talking fast because the first seconds of a YouTube video will determine if you're like, yeah, I'll watch this, or if you shut off your computer in pure anger. The average consumer's attention span is only about four to five seconds before moving on, and slow websites typically have a high bounce rate according to a 2012 Google study. A high bounce rate generally means a lower conversion rate. So if your dog themed sock e-commerce store is hitting hard times, it could be because your website is slow or because you don't have pug themed knee highs. Website speed, even if we don't think about it, is the first impression. Subconsciously, fast equals professional and slow equals amateur. Strap in because here are some stats. 79% of online shoppers say they wouldn't go back to a website if it had trouble loading. 47% of users expect a page to load in two seconds or less. 40% of users will abandon a page if it takes longer than three seconds, and 85% of users expect a mobile site to load as fast or even faster when compared to the same site on their desktop. Now if you still don't believe me, maybe the most convincing argument would be that if Amazon's website slowed down by even just one second, they would lose about $1.6 billion per year. Now that we got that out of the way, this is how I fixed my college's website. You can find all the resources I use down in the description below. I also want to shout out my friend Clark. We were in the same web application and maintenance class and we did this project actually exactly together. So I want to shout out him. Thanks for all the help and you can find his website down in the description below. Consider giving this video a like and subscribing for future videos if you are interested in computer science tech and college advice, videos like this take me a long time to make, so it would mean a lot. Well first, how bad is it actually? Well, Big Brother Google can help us with that using Google's beautiful Lighthouse tool, and the results are in with UCSD scoring a 50 out of 100. Not bad actually, but on their own grading scale, that would probably be failing, so uh... Yeah, sorry about that. They've actually improved it greatly within the last few months because when I first did these initial tests, it was a around a zero. For the sake of brevity, we're just gonna work on the main page for now. I'm gonna try to explain this in a non-super technical way so it's not that boring. But first, since UCSD doesn't give me the magical keys to the kingdom of their servers, I'll basically just need to clone their page. Now I could go through this all manually and save all the sources. <clears throat> which I definitely didn't do my first time, but that's extremely tedious and annoying. So I can clone the web page with this useful little command here, then host it on Netlify so that we can continuously test our improvements. First, I'm gonna change all of the URLs to local URLs so that our page won't keep going to the live UCSD page for resources. Additionally, Netlify adds a little bit of server compression, so we should see some pretty decent improvements starting off. Next, we can check on Lighthouse and see what Papa Google tells us to do. Eliminate render blocking resources. This essentially means we should inline critical JavaScript and CSS and defer the rest. Now for those not familiar, inlining basically means taking some CSS and putting it within a style block directly in the index HTML page. But how do we find what is critical and what is not? We can use this handy dandy coverage tool. The green is critical and the red is non-critical. As you can probably see, we have a lot of non-critical stuff. So we want to take all these green blocks and inline them in a style block on our index.html page. But going through this manually seems really annoying, so we're gonna try to use a tool called Critical, which should do this for us. Now we can see the difference between the original and our improved version. After inlining, we can see that our score is now, bang, a 99. Not bad at all, but we still have some opportunities. We can preload some of our key requests using link rel equals preload. So doing that, we still get a 99. Removing unused CSS, this is sort of where Lighthouse starts to have some problems. See, it reports that this brick sans file is completely unused, which 
we know is not true because if we delete it, the font on the home page clearly changes, so it's not unused. So we're just gonna ignore that for now. But now that there are only some small things left on the desktop version, let's make sure it's fast on mobile too. Here we can see there's even more we can do. Again, we are gonna ignore this unused CSS business because again, it's clearly not unused. One of the easiest and most overlooked methods is to simply just compress the images. We can use TinyJPEG to do this. Additionally, you can serve images in a WebP format, which has better compression, but it's not supported in every browser, so we're just gonna keep it in whatever format it's already in. Additionally, we're gonna lazy load all of our images, which basically means only fully load the image when it needs to be displayed to the user instead of on page load. Lastly, we can minify all of our HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, which removes all of the extra space to ensure we are sending the smallest possible size over the network. I'm not going to do this because it basically makes it unreadable. Also, it's giving me some random syntax errors, and I'm also just lazy and kind of over it. Now for the final results. <clears throat> Drum roll, please. It's time for the moment you've been waiting for. Duh. The original live UCSD site receives about a 54 on the desktop version and a 30 on the mobile version. And our new and improved site receives around a 95 to a 99 based on the session on the desktop version and about a 71 on the mobile version. We can use another benchmarker, webpagetest.org, and we can see how our new page dominates the OG one. Now, as a quick disclaimer, I am not an expert on web performance. I took one class in college. There were some errors I couldn't fix, and there were probably some strategies in this that I didn't use. If you like this stuff, you should definitely check out Google's web.dev that has tons of information on web development good practices. Comment down below if you like this sort of video and comment down below any suggestions you have for future videos. I wanna give a shout out to my friend Clark again. Also, if you are new to the channel, my name is Michael. I make college advice, computer science, and tech videos if you are interested in any of those, consider subscribing for future content or checking out my past content. Give this video a like if you want to help your boy out with the YouTube algorithm. And tune in next time for when I learn Aikido. Bye bye.